Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and thank you all so much for coming on the show Real Time, where we are live talking about film and television and everything in between. Today, we have a very, very special guest, and it's working this time. We have Mr. Omar Reagan with us, and we're going to dive in and talk about his journey to becoming a Hollywood actor and now comedian. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Hey there, everyone, and thank you again so much for tuning in from the bottom of my heart, from the top of my heart, from the side of my heart, from the left of my heart. I really appreciate every single one of y'all tuning in. If y'all have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments. I'll be reading them as they come in. If you have any questions for Omar, I'll relay them to him just so we can get this to be a little bit more interactive. Uh, but yeah, as we are here, I would love to invite y'all and help me welcome Mr. Omar Reagan, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Omar. Wa alaikum salam, my good friend. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing really good. Forgive me that I'm not just sitting still, you know. Um, but uh, I am with you. I am with you, Mustafa. I, I love it. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Alhamdulillah. And you know what, too, Mustafa? You know what? You know what? Because this is all about Hollywood. I'm bringing all of your viewers to Hollywood. So I'm going to take a <laughs> couple of turns right there, and then I'm going to give them a tour of Hollywood while we're talking about Hollywood just for your viewers. This is exclusive. I appreciate it. This is exclusive. Alhamdulillah. That's right. <laughs> So, let's let's dive right into it. Just uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. You know where you grew up, how you came into the Hollywood scene, etc. Yeah. Floor is yours. Oh man, Hamila, uh, this I like to tell this story because you know it's kind of like sometimes we forget or we just don't reflect enough. Uh, I was like, I grew up in Detroit. My mother converted to Islam when I was five years old. Uh, and then, alhamdulillah, she got married, and we were learning Islam, and he, uh, you know, my father was also a new Muslim, mm -hmm. and um, they were studying, studying Islam, and so everything was haram, like there was <laughs> nothing that we could do and stuff, like, like nothing, and my personality has always been fun, but their fun was, it was like fun was haram, like the, <laughs> you should be reading Quran or something, like don't be playing around. And um, I, I was like, creatively, artistically, I felt trapped. I, I was like, the only thing that I could do was um, not, like, nasheeds is what they call it today. But we didn't yeah. call them nasheeds then. We called them zikrs. Allah. <laughs> yeah, SubhanAllah. Them zikrs. I'll tell you my first zikr that I wrote. It was, it was like, I put a lot into this one. It was, it was, I put a lot into it. I give you guys like the gist of it mm -hmm. and uh it was uh i'll stop for a law 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 that was the whole song that is so original bro so original you know what i'm saying like i was like woo. Oh, one, two, one, two. Like, who's ready? Nobody's ready for this. <laughs> right? So, Do me a quick favor. Can you can you rotate the camera just a little bit so you're a little more centered? Not yeah. in your frame, just a little bit to your... Uh, left? Turn it to your left, yeah. Okay, how about that? Is that Sorry. Good? Is that better? Sorry, the opposite, opposite, opposite. To the oh, right, oh, to the right. Okay, okay, this way. There we go, there we go. Hey. Now you are, there you are. Yes, Mustafa, sir. Mustafa, Mustafa. Mustafa. <laughs> <laughs> but, All right. That, I yeah. Was doing, that was my first song, and um, we were we used to beat on pots and pans and and <laughs> sit inside. And people would think today or like yesterday, people would think we were soupies or something. <laughs> we were, Allah. We, were we spin our heads right round, right round. <laughs> 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 That's 
No. We used to run around the house and run around in circles in the house. But we didn't, we just was trying to keep ourselves entertained. And uh, later, uh, as we continued to keep studying, then um, uh, we started, I started writing rhymes. Start, I, I used to sneak, to be honest with you. I used to sneak. Um, because my pops had, I had more, always, always had more than one wife. I mean, my pops had two wives at the time. <laughs> and, um, I, I had brothers, right? And yeah. my brother sometimes would go to his mom's house and he would be up on all of the latest of everything. And I was like jealous. So I, in order to try to keep up, I used to try to like, um, find me some rap songs and I one of the first tapes I got that I snuck and listened to on my own was Parents Just Don't Understand by Will Smith. Allah. I knew that whole album. Parents Just Don't Understand. I like, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. And, um, sorry, I was paying attention to traffic. That's cool. Um, <laughs> but, but like, I was like, wow, I said, I could do that. I could do that. And that's what made me start writing rhymes. And I started mm -hmm. writing rhymes. And then uh, my father would make me perform them at, like, community events. Right? <laughs> Allah. Love those. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just all community events. But listen, I don't know. Is this a good view for you and all of you? I'm bringing you all. We on Hollywood Boulevard. We can on Hollywood Boulevard right now? I can see yep. it. I can see you it. Can see it. Can you see the, the famous Chinese theater over here? Can you see it? Yes, sir. I can see that. I can see yeah, that. There it is. We talk about Hollywood, the walk of the stars. We are here, right here on the Mustafa <laughs> Talib show, all the way here in Los Angeles. You can see yes, the sir. walk of the stars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mashallah. So, so I mean, my next my, exclusive. My next question then, like what, okay. what drew you to becoming an actor and then eventually into being a comedian? Well, that, 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 that grounding right there, that's, that's what, what pushed me, but I didn't know that. I've always thought that it was haram, that we couldn't do it. Like, yeah. you know, and it wasn't until like I started doing the raps and that I was like, oh man, like oh, we used to. Uh, act out kung fu movies and then when the message came and lion of the desert came Allah. i was like oh wait a minute my inspiration my inspiration right. to becoming a film for a filmmaker and that anthony quinn man when he did that omar Mukhtar, i it, we live and we die and don't never it did never stop there you have the next generation to fight and, uh, and after and the, the next, next the next, the next. Allah. So I always be like, oh, it, it touched me. And then they, I must see Sidi Omar. Like that movie, <laughs> man, I cried and it was just too much. And then uh, the message also, it was like, I want to do this. But I didn't know that it was possible. So to make a long story short, I started doing rap first. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and can you, can you rotate again? The, your camera is just a little off. Oh, can you rotate just a it, little bit? Okay. Is this, to the, how about to your it? right. To your right. To my right. That's it. That's right. Take it back now, y'all. Okay. Oh, one foot left oh, up. One hot suit time. <laughs> Two hot suit time. <laughs> a little bit more. Can you do a little bit more? It's just a little bit yeah. off. That's yeah. it. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, it's because you're the director. I just, just you, you just to get it I right. got you, you bro. Keep, I got you. Just, you I got know you. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know what you said, Habibi. Habibi. I, I appreciate Albi. you and all of our viewers out there being patient with me. Um, as I'm, I'm moving around, but I wanted to do something special to you. Thank you so much. I, I really, I really do feel honored with your presence and taking the time out of your spe busy schedule to be with us, man. Like it really means the world to me. You know, I remember when we first met all those years ago at that Oklahoma care fundraiser where you were the entertainer <laughs> and I had you on camera to do a Chris Tucker impression to for everybody to subscribe. Like that, that was the birth of our friendship, mashallah. And I'm so happy again that you took the time to be here with us and, you know, to share your experience into becoming into, uh, to getting into Hollywood. Mashallah. Yeah, man. I'm glad. Thank you too, Mustafa, because likewise, man, and you've been doing great work with the cinema king. You know, so and it's it's. I was happy to meet you too because, I mean, I figure like you, we have so much in common where we don't have a platform, and and that's what brings me up into this. What I what I said 
we have to create. Muslims can act, and we can do it without having all the haram. And we can make family family friendly films and tell authentic stories that will really represent us because Hollywood's not doing it and it's not for them to do because they don't know us like that. Of course. So, and that that basically answers my third question, which is what is the importance of becoming an actor or a comedian, you know? And that's what it, it is. It's very important because like this is a, a space that we're not in. And mm -hmm. That's the reason why the media can keep on portraying, a, a telling a story. Like, there's an African proverb that says, "The lion will, uh, the lion will always be the target if the story continuously be told by the hunter." Allah. So, the hunter keeps telling the story, and nobody really knows anything about the lion. But the lion tells you that he's this and he's that. And that's us. Like, they keep, the media keeps telling you what Muslims are and what they believe. And nobody mm -hmm. knows. They just, like, woo. But in our bubbles, in our circles, like, everybody knows each other. We have so much fun. We've been chilling and we're so loving and it's so kind. And it's like, but nobody else knows it. So, nobody film, knows film, the film. trouble that I see. <laughs> Nobody knows my sorrow. Anyway, go ahead. Continue. Uh, Scott. <laughs> oh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Love, love, love Lion King. The, the original, not the remake. Right, but right, right. Anyway, so let me ask you this then. How did you, quote unquote, make it? Um, like, okay, so... I, I, I left Detroit because there was no acting. I did an audition in Detroit. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that my father was uh, so supportive. Uh, because I'm telling you, it didn't make sense what I was doing. Um, but My father was, was supportive of me, of what I'm doing. So I know the I same know. thing, bro. Yeah. And you know, you can't answer all the questions. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't know. How you going to do this? I don't know. I don't yeah. have all the answers, but... They were, and my father was very supportive. I was like, I'm going to California. I'm going mm -hmm. to do this movie. You know, this is what I want to do. He's like, okay, for us, man. I mean, I'll, I'll be with you. That was no need anything. And I came to California. I was a guy who was doing a movie, but he was from Detroit. His name was Mark Casey. And the movie was called Nikita Blues. And I don't know if you or your viewers know who Brandon T. Jackson is. <laughs> but he he was in Tropic Thunder and lottery yeah. ticket, you know. Uh, but me and him was there auditioning for the same film, <laughs> and mm -hmm. so they told us both that we could both be in the movie. He was like, "Look, you did really good. You'll be in this movie. All you got to do is get to California. The budget is low." And I was like, "All right, got to get to California." And he said, "You could bring friends with you if you can." I was like, "Okay," because he just wanted to get back to Detroit. It was very dope. Um, but the challenge was I didn't have the money to get to California, right? Yeah. So I had, um, I, I was like, I told my friends and then three of my friends were supposed to come with me and then they didn't have no money except for one. And it was a female. And then I was yeah. like, uh Oh, I can't be traveling with this girl. And but yeah. she the one that came through and she said, look, you're my way to Hollywood. Like, and you gotta, you gotta get on it. You gotta get on this bus. I was like, "What are you talking about? You gotta get on this bus." And she went and bought a Greyhound bus ticket, companion ride free, and that's how mm. I got out of Detroit. So Ayana, shout out to Ayana, and that's how I, I got there. Um, Thank you, Ayana, for there, making this happen for all of I know, man. Thank you, Ayana. Subhanallah, how Good. how things happen, you know? Yep. It's so true. It's like it's like the you know the hadith that we hear, Allah will help you and support you for means in which you couldn't imagine. And it's like I've experienced that. Oh, let me tell you more. Let me tell you more. Let me tell you more. Yeah. Not, yeah. I've experienced that a few times in my life. Mustafa, Mustafa, Mustafa. <laughs> Wait till I tell you this. So we get to California and the guy can shoot the movie and we don't have nowhere to stay. Oof. First of all, it was three days on the bus. Right. Yeah. And then we ran out of money because the whole thing was to get here to make money. And we ran out of money on the way here. Not that we were splurging. We just didn't have a lot. 
And yeah. we were eating. So by the time we got here, you know, we called him. We said, we're here. We're ready to film. And where do we go? What do we do next? And he was like, oh, man, I wish I wish I would have known. I'm not, I wasn't able to shoot the movie. He said, like, what? Yep, I, it, I, didn't, I didn't get enough budget. I can't shoot the movie right now. I'm still going to film it, but I got more stuff to do. And I was like, oh, my God, what? Man. And so he was like, yeah, I'm sorry. So we slept at Greyhound bus station that first night. Okay. And that was annoying because the, the <laughs> announcements kept going. We tied our, our luggage, our bags on our wrists so that people wouldn't take our stuff while we would sleep. We would at least wake up. Man. We did sleep in turn, so it's good that she was still there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, all, we, we really was all we had. And the next day we said, okay, skip it. We got to get back on the bus to go back home um but let's go sightsee and get some information because we're in california it's our first time being in california let's just go of and course see. so we got asked for directions we hopped on the buses and public transportation and we were passing by this casting place yeah and it, it, it was like let's go in there and let's get some information so clearly the guy was gay right he was clearly gay okay and then, um he was like, oh, hey, yeah. Oh, wow. He just got so intrigued with our story. I mean, his name was Wizard. He's a gay <laughs> guy. And he was like, man, I could sign you up. Like, right now, you guys, we said we don't have no phone number. We don't have no address here. We can't sign up to be inside of your movies. And right then, the phone rung. And he said, I have two African-Americans right now. I could send them over. I could just sign. Yeah. So look at what he did. Oh my. I'm telling you, when we talk about uh, places in which we knew not, he said, I just signed you guys up on a movie that, that will work you for three days. It was called okay. Ready to Rumble. Right. And we were like, okay, it was starring Oliver Platt and David Arquette. And I was like, oh man, I know those names. And, uh, He's like, yeah, I can say, you know, he said, so here's what I'm going to do for you because I'm intrigued by your story. You guys can stay with me. And I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> How do I, I was like, no. And so Ayana said, hey, what are you tripping about? You pray five times a day. It just yeah. every day don't mean he wants you. You you fine. You're protected. You're good. And I was like, yeah. look at her giving me doubt. Allah. <laughs> and so I was like, but listen, listen, listen. We got to be in the same room, okay? We can't. Yeah. We can't. I don't want to be in the office by myself. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I heard stories about California, and I'm sorry. And she was like, that's no problem. We could be in the same room. It's fine. And I was like, cool. So we went and got our stuff out of the lockers because we had a four-hour window before our lockers would open up. We went and yeah. got our lockers, and then we came back. That guy picked us up from the corner of Sunset and Highland, right? And we were wow. just total strangers, man, and he let us stay there for three days. But we were on set for 16 days. Oof. And, but we ate three. I mean, I'm sorry. We were on set for 16 hours. I'm sorry. There you go. 16 that, okay. hours, right? That makes yeah. sense. And, and um, so we didn't have to just sleep there and we would get up at like early, like budget time and be headed back to set for, for three sure. days straight. And then my aunt, I got a hold of my aunt uh, who lived in Orange County. And nice. then that was, that was my whole Hollywood journey. And after that, I've done, that's how I got in. And then so then, it was like so then my, my question, mm -hmm. so then my question, what big projects have you worked on? <laughs> So, I mean, since then, it, I, I kept doing the small stuff. And now the, uh, I got casted for this. My biggest one starting out was um, Black Superman with uh, Master P. <laughs> I mm -hmm. did that film. It was Master P, Michael Blackton. It's all, oh, shush. Feels like almost almost 20 years ago. And that was oh. 15 years, 15, 16 years ago. And um, what else? Then I did... Um, Life is Hot in Cracktown with Kerry Washington, which I never tell anybody about that movie because it was so hot. Um, meaning yeah. that the whole story was about crackheads and how we lived as crackheads and even Kerry Washington. I remember seeing the trailer. Ninja. It's horrible, this movie. Hot on, right? I remember seeing uh, you for a split second in the trailer. I was like, there he is. 
Yeah, oh, it's so bad. It was so bad, this movie. It's so and then, yeah. uh, I, uh, I actually, I got, even before then, they offered me, like, I had got offered to be, like, the main character, but I had to play a gay guy. I'm sorry, we got some trouble happening. You're good, bro. Okay. Police is blocking off the streets and stuff, and I was like, uh-oh. Uh, but I had got offered to play the gay guy, and I turned it down. It was a Will Smith show. It would have been oh. the biggest show. But I'm grateful I turned that down. Oh, I did another big show. Um, another big show was, um, what you call this? Uh, VH1 had this show called Fight for Fame. And uh, the VH1 network is the Kim mm-hmm. Kardashian's network now. But it was yeah. called Fight for <laughs> Fame. And um, I won that show and signed the contract. And that's what got me into all of these other doors. Because I signed with an agency and it was on the VH1 network. And that mm-hmm. opened up. That opened up doors for me. Mashallah. But I turned down the gig, Mustafa. When yeah. I turned down the gig, they were so upset with me. And it spreads um, like wildfire. That the, yeah, that I didn't put the um, play the down low, brother. That they didn't offer me no more jobs, man. Um, mm. Except for a transsexual job that I also had to turn down. And they had told me, come dressed in character. So I, <laughs> I didn't do that. And then that's when Hollywood got tired of me and left me alone. Mm. Because they was like, we're going to make you a star, Omar. Like, you're really likable. We like you. We're going to make you a star. And they, they had good intentions. They really had good intentions, you know. Um, but it was just not my thing. And I didn't blame it on being Muslim. I didn't, you know, I didn't do all of that. I just really didn't want to do it. I did not right. want to be down low, brother. And they, you should, if the challenges that they gave me, if you're a yeah. good actor, then you can do it no problem. You know, yeah. so it may start making you, you know, you really be in your head and you've got to trust yourself. And I'm so grateful that Allah blessed me. It cost me financially, but mm-hmm. spiritually and morally, I was, I, I mean, I became extremely wealthy. And that say Allah rewarded me amazingly because then I got, I did uh, Rush Hour 2. Oh, the big Rush break. Hour two, right. I did Rush Hour 2. And I'm sorry I skipped Rush Hour 2 because Rush Hour 2 was, listen to this. I did Rush Hour 2 uh, early on in my career. All of the, mm-hmm. everything that I just said came after Rush Hour 2. Oh. Even I, I did see. this movie called Undisputed with um, that Wesley Snipes was in. And they was like, we're yeah. going to pay you a shower scene. We want you to do be a shower scene, you know, in a prison. I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> Why is it that every single time an artist wants to make it somewhere, whether it be a, 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 any type of creative, a painter, a, a photographer, a filmmaker, an actor, whatever, they have to be doing the things that is yani, prohibited by our dean. Like, why is it always got to be like that? Tell me why. You know, I, I honestly truly believe that it's two things. One is definitely uh, because the people, they think nothing of it. It's not a yeah. big deal to them. because they I'm don't, just they, acting. Yeah, it's just acting. It's not a big deal. But I honestly truly believe it's just the whisper of shaitan. It's, of course. The, it's a test for anybody who has morals and integrity. Right. Yeah. And it's to see if you trust this more than you trust yourself and trust your creator. Mm-hmm. And if you really don't want to do it, if you don't have any issues about doing it, then go. Because I, I see brothers now putting on a bias and they put on hijabs to be funny. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I see them doing that. So, it, but it's it. So they don't think anything of it. That's fine for them. But for mm-hmm. me, it was not fine uh, yeah. because. I, I just have a different standard, uh, you know, and I was just living by my morals and my standards, my moral code, and mm-hmm. alhamdulillah, I'm grateful for that, which I have so many Muslims telling me, dude, just put the dress on. Like, it's just like wearing a thong. What's the difference? And I was like, uh, the print? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like what the heck? What do you mean? What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> so... Is that Subhan. floral that you see, that floral print. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but I did. I, so look here. Look. So rush hour. I did rush hour. Yeah. Years before, and then I also did, which I skipped. I also did Ocean's Eleven. 
and I was in the scene with Bernie Mac in Ocean's Eleven. Um, no, I was playing blackjack, right? Okay. And the scene got cut out. The movie. <laughs> I was at the blackjack table. Oh my! Bernie Mac was saying was talking to me, and they only took a pinch of that clip, and then they just moved on. They didn't. They didn't keep it. Like, and I was like. I was really excited and looking for me to be in that clip to have him talking to me in that clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That scene. Because that I mean, cut. one, he's a legend, and I was a big fan. Even though I was, I wasn't really playing blackjack because it's you know. It's of course. Like it's just on but, screen, just you know, throw a card or whatever. But it right? looked like I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the Haram police, but it still had a feel. Brother, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah, but, but that, that, seed, that that's awesome. Yeah, that seed was planted. The rush hour seed. Mm -hmm. Seven years later, mm -hmm. as the rush hour was working for me, the Muslim organization, and after I after look at this, seven years later after doing rush hour, and I turned down the uh, the um, what you call this the uh, the dress the. The, the gay character, I turned yeah. it down, and then I turned down the transsexual character. Yeah. That next year, I got invited for Hajj. Subhanallah. That is amazing. I got amazing. invited for Hajj, and it was like, and I could bring up the four of my friends. Mm hmm And so, I was so <laughs> excited, and Alhamdulillah, I went for Hajj, uh, and then I, I was like, it was amazing. And then, guess what? Because of the rush hour, I got invited back to Hajj again. The, next, the very next year, 2008. MashaAllah. And this is the time when I did my, um, I did uh, my uh, imper impression, uh, impression of a fish tucker in the Haram. Right. When and I, that went I viral. Yes. That went viral, which viral wasn't a thing back then. <laughs> we didn't know it. It wasn't labeled, but it went viral. And yeah. the rumor was Chris Tucker had converted to Islam and changed his name to Omar Regan. And people were looking for Omar Regan. <laughs> and because Allah blessed me, because I turned that down, subhanAllah, all of these Muslim organizations from around the world were inviting me. And the first invitation that I accepted and went to was London. And I did a, a school tour. And that was it. I didn't even, I, I hadn't written jokes for Muslim audiences because Muslims wasn't known to laugh. So, <laughs> and then I had that stigma in my head too. Uh, you know, like, don't laugh, don't laugh. So I wasn't writing, but now I started writing jokes for Muslims, man. And I started yeah. traveling. And, and then after that, subhanAllah, man, I was like, we got to make our own movie. Hence came the birth of Halaliwood. Perfect. So let's let's talk about that. So <laughs> what I mean, in your experience, I mean, I know this, but I just want everybody to understand what does it take to make a movie on your it, terms? It takes you to have your own budget. You have to money. have your own money. Mm -hmm. it, and unfortunately, the Muslim community that have the Muslim communities don't understand that we need the money to be able to change the narrative and control the narrative of Muslims throughout the whole world. Like funding us filmmakers and yes. allowing us to do what we do would change everything. And yeah. I, they just don't get it because in their mind, they think it's a hobby, but they're not right. paying attention that if they're funding this, they're going to make a huge return from it. Because the industry is, why are we not doing it that they make $100 million off of one movie, $200 billion? And like, I exactly. was looking at the success of Bad Boys 3, like, wow, I'm grateful there was two Muslim directors that got it, uh, mm -hmm. that got the job, you know. Uh, but it's like, we have to do their thing. We can't do our thing. Yeah. You know, and so we need money. We, we have need money. We need and we money. have money. We have money because we, we can it. allocate it for other important things. But we need to fund the arts. We need to fund the filmmakers, the media people, journalists, so that we can tell our own stories, whether creatively or journalistically. And I think 
uh, this is just basically like a mini PSA to anybody who's watching that, you know, you have to fund us as, you know, the creatives and the arts because we're the ones who are in charge of uh, making a difference. We're the ones that can make the difference with your help. So support work like Halaliwood uh, and other creatives in their respective fields because they change the narrative. They are the ones that impact the minds and the culture of our society, which has the ripple effect, right? I've always had this theory that, you know, a society is made up of uh, communities. Communities are made up of uh, families. Families are made up of individuals. If you affect the individual, ergo, domino effect, you affect and hopefully change society for the better, right? So if you can have that positive influence, if you can relay the correct information to that one individual, then in theory, and we've seen it happen, that it will create a positive change in the minds of the people, and that's what we want. We want to tell our stories, and there's so much beauty in our stories that can be learned from. Yeah. Sure. Mashallah. So it's really true. I don't let know me, hope let they get it. Go ahead. Because they, I mean, unfortunately, it's really tough because, I, I mean, we have so many massages, but mm -hmm. we continuously keep building more. And yeah. it's like nothing is changing as far as mainstream media towards Muslims and towards all of the hate that's out there. And mainly it's because it's one, one propaganda that's continuously uh, associating Muslims with terrorism and that. It's a problem because people get to know you, and, and I mean, all of us we get to yeah. know each other by television, by movies. And that's the importance of it. Yep. So, so let me ask you this. We here. We here. We happening. Alhamdulillah. So let me ask you this then. In relation to COVID-19, the coronavirus, how has that affected your work? SubhanAllah, man, let me tell you, every event was canceled. Yeah. It has like, it has, uh, it's like, I didn't know what was to be, what was going to come of it. Like, wow, I was like, wow, SubhanAllah. Every event was canceled. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, okay. And I learned this ayat. And I learned this ayat. Right? And says, say there's no difficulty that's written for you except that it's written for us except Allah. It's, Allah knows it. It's, you know, who he is, who am Maulana, he is our enricher. Uh, yes. And on Allah, let the ones, the believers put their trust, you know. Oops, so, absolutely. I was like, well, okay, here we go. Must gotta be writing. So, man, let me tell you something. Let me, I have. Because of this corona, I've been extra creative and I have something very unique that I'm going mm -hmm. to make an announcement in the next few days. So I've been Inshallah. extremely busy, Mustafa. Of I've course. been like, there's something that we can do. And it's the fact that we jumped into Ramadan, uh, I was like, wow, I have, I have something to present to each and every one of us that we could still stay connected, alhamdulillah. Uh, and I'm excited to be like doing the work that Allah has blessed me to do as far as feeding the fasting and uh, uh, having iftar grabbing goals. And, and yeah. now I, I, I'm like, wow, every aid is going to be different for everybody. This Ramadan is different yeah. for everybody. So I need to do something. Yeah. And I will tell you all if you're following me on the Instagram. <laughs> I will link it down below, inshallah, so you can follow him there. Um, so... How do you think this experience with being in quarantine is going to change your art specifically moving forward? Yeah, it's definitely going to be a new normal um, around here. And I think people are going to be moving a little scarce. Uh, but what I truly believe and I, I truly believe wholeheartedly is that people are going to be ready to get outside and be back to work that they're going to want so much. And I think yeah. they will we'll have a lot to do. Um, mm -hmm. so alhamdulillah, I mean, I'm like, hey man, <laughs> this is, this is an opportunity for all of us. Like, I believe that there's a balance, right? And that Allah doesn't test us except for, or challenge us except for he has a reward for us. 
And yes. as artists and filmmakers, I believe, man, and they're all making so that there's some Muslims out here. There's some doctors, there's some engineers, and they're mm -hmm. going to be like, yes, I'm watching this show. These guys are right. Um, we need more content. Let's fund these brothers. They're going to come up with the with a nice budget and be like, we're going we're gonna to back you. And we're going to do the work and you're going to make it all back. Inshallah. So let's talk real quick. You, you started Halaliwood, right? This platform to, and this production company to uh, create films made by Muslims, for Muslims, and everyone else to enjoy, to understand the message of Islam, etc., etc. Now, you've already made one film, American Sharia. And I remember seeing yeah. the premiere of it when y'all came through to Dallas. It was an yeah. awesome, awesome movie. What do you have coming up in the pipeline? Oh, man, I'm excited. So from American Sharia, you know, after I made that movie, yes. um, like I had so many challenges of making that movie because I wasn't supposed to be the, well, let me not say it like that. I didn't plan to direct that movie because I didn't go to school for directing. Mm -hmm. I wrote the movie, um, which is where I know I'm very strong. Mm -hmm. um, and... The brother, he was like, he the, that I was hiring to direct it. He was like, he just was like, man, Omar, you doing all of this work? The Muslims are not going to support you. They're not going to support it. And I just wow. feel bad for you, you know. And so then I was like, I'm going to get the money. But nobody believed in it, right? And he's like, you know how many people have done this before you? And it, it was just, it was just all negative. But I was like, I'm going to do it. So when Kickstarter came, mm -hmm. uh, and we raised the funds on Kickstarter. I wanted to raise more money, but I was like, skip it. We had like $90,000. I was like, we got to make this movie. Like, I got to make mm -hmm. it for what I have. For what I have. So, we went, man, and the brother, I called him back, said, we got the money. And he was like, ah, uh, Omar, I got to jump on another project. I was like, what do you mean? I got to jump on another project, man. But, you know, man. if anybody's going to direct it, you know the story, you should direct it. And this is what turned me into this director field, the way I was like, oh, my God, I love it. To yeah. be able to I write it and then show the things that you've written, it just makes it so amazing, right? Of course. So I was like, okay, I don't have a choice. I got to direct it. So I'm grateful I did. Find me a DP. I went through the ups and downs of, that whole um, ordeal but what i what came out of it was a completed feature film i missed some scenes because we ran out of money uh mm -hmm. i had to play twice for sound design because all budget issues yeah but i was grateful for what we were able to do and i got so inspired like we could actually do this and even though the muslims weren't able to come out in groves like in dallas they didn't come out in groves and we didn't yeah. have a lot of money for marketing yeah. um so that hurt us like that that hurt us a lot when i tied with the uh, we had big tour in the uk the muslims yeah. came out very strong in other yeah. places but in the u.s it was big, it was really difficult mm -hmm. um, i made a deal with cinemark and cinemark charged me like two thousand dollars a theater and I brought up these theaters and people didn't show up. It really hurt us financially. Yeah. Um, but I, it didn't make us stop. And so after that, I was like, okay, I took a lot of constructive criticism back. I knew a lot of it had to do with budget. And mm -hmm. I just got ready to write my next film. And then I took Martin Scorsese's master class, uh, mm -hmm. Spike Lee's master class, Samuel Jackson's master class, Aaron nice. Sorkin's writing class, and Shonda Rhimes. I didn't finish Shonda Rhimes' writing class, but I was there. Like, I was in there. I did oh, more than half of it. And then I was just inspired. And then I wrote, I rewrote um, um, my film called Faithful Neighbors. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing. And then I wanted to do something so different. I like, I like it like I didn't write it. That mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Seeing what happened with uh, with our first film, I have to go mainstream because Muslims only believe in you. Well, the, uh, the the larger number of Muslims where you get the major Muslim support is when you uh, are, are mainstream. Already made it. Are you you successful and you made it? Then mm. they believe in you that you're. As something that happens that they just believe that this is just like some small thing that you're doing. It's a hobby. Yeah, But if you're mainstream, then you're seen at the same level. And so mm -hmm. the fact that I'm, a, I'm, I'm inside, I'm a screen actor, uh, screen after member, 
I'm in the mm-hmm. same union as Denzel Washington, for example. All of the actors uh, nature of all these celebrities. So I That's was incredible. Like, I'm going to take Hollywood in my next film. Because well, I was hiring Muslims in my films. So now mm-hmm. I have to change this model. And I have to hire some Muslims. Right? I was mm-hmm. like going 90% Muslim. Now I have to hire some Muslims. Right? Because I got to go union. So that yeah. we'll be on the next level. But I can hire some Muslims and we'll pay the penalty because there's a penalty when you're not in the union to bring people on into the union. So I, I, I have our politics involved. In. Yeah. So okay. I have a plan um, and how I can open up the doors for us as Muslims. But I'm going to mm-hmm. have to go another route because these Muslim doctors and engineers, they haven't it hasn't clicked on yet. If mm-hmm. they were funding the move, the movie, we can do it ourselves and make it big and strong. We can Inshallah, enter film yeah. festivals. We can do that. But since they're not funding us, then I have to go the other route and then go through SAG, mm-hmm. make the films, go through the film festival, and then let SAG protect us and be able to give us the funds. So with Faithful Neighbors, alhamdulillah, and now it may take me a little bit longer to make to uh, get all of my Muslim my uh, Muslim stars, as I, I like to say. But like yeah. yes, as far as I told her, she's our Angelina Jolie. You Allah. know what I mean? Like yes, she you is. Know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm like you are you. That's that's what you. We have our own, and then I put I hired Eric Roberts to be the bad guy, <laughs> <laughs> which he wanted to tell the story. So then now, I I got a plan for all of us with this platform that we will be able to bring us Muslims inside of this platform, us writers, uh, we just need to be able to build that stability where now we can call shots. And yeah. calling the shots makes a big difference. I mean, Absolutely. Like, even inside the industry. So, yeah, that man. That is amazing. We have, we, have, we have four films, four feature films ready to go, written and ready to go. MashaAllah, I am I'm super pumped. And again, I'm just, I'm not saying there's, you, you know I've been bugging you. If you need me, I'm there, bro. I'm there. <laughs> you know, I have a plan for you also because say like if you're not in the union. So I have a plan for you also. And okay. another plan is that is we need people to shoot the BTS. And we make the BTS a doc. And exactly. what's inside of that doc also use that to bring other Muslims inside of the union. So we have a plan and we'll see what Allah says to execute Inshallah. this plan. To be able to bring Muslims, we need more Muslims because unfortunately what I'm finding out in the mainstream media is they hire, like HBO, they hire Muslim consultants, uh, yeah. but the Muslim consultants are not necessarily in, in the community. They're, you know, they're kind of out of touch. The, a large percentage of them are out of touch. And this is the reason yeah. why we see the hijab is, doesn't look the same. They may yeah. not can say the Arabic words. You know, mm-hmm. like, it's it just, it's, it's missing. It doesn't represent who we really truly are. And the yep. stories are horrible. I saw, Absolutely. Uh, I saw Garbage. How to, how, what is that? How to get away with murder? They had, they had a Muslim sister in hijab who was playing a refugee who lied on the immigration and she was a lesbian. Right? I don't understand. I like, Why? I, what, you know how many Muslims we are and how strong we are as like just a, representing Muslim families of who we really truly are. And we're subscribed to Netflix, dude. And we're subscribed yeah. to Hulu and all of it. And we don't act like that. Like, that's such a, a small percentage of the Muslims that's out here that they're catering to. And it's just so annoying that yeah. we have amazing stories. And the stories are really good. But they wouldn't know that because they don't read our scripts. But they can't read our scripts because we're not in the room. <laughs> so It's the whole, yeah. the whole process, man. So it's last fun. question. Last question. What would you advise to any young creative, being an actor, artist, uh, a filmmaker? What would you say is just not not to make shortcuts, but like what is the way to make it into the industry? Is it should you, should you go independent just because of yeah. the way the system is, or should you fight the system to make it in? I love this question because there's there's multiple routes now. Um, right. Because of social media, you're able to, looking at the success of the Issa Rae, 
she just made her own story and put it out on YouTube, and then now she's got an HBO deal. Now, our challenge may be a little bit, you know, harder than that because we have morals mm-hmm. and integrity, and of course, all that other stuff, sex, and all of that negativity sells. Uh, but we have creativity is powerful, so mm-hmm. I would tell you, write your show, create your show. Um, you got Muslims out here. You have yourself as a director. Just look and say, "Hey, I want to make this show." You have you have Muslim directors that also need to work and want to work. So what you have to do is within inside of your own right, even if it's a short, like you can do it. You can even use your phone. You can come up with great yes. ideas. Hold on to your integrity. Hold on to your morals because yes. I honestly, truly believe that it's going to it's going to flood the market. Like what happened in India with Bollywood. Yeah, now, now Bollywood is huge. Bollywood is they make more movies in Hollywood. Yeah. Same with Nigeria, and now you see that Nigeria has move has series on Netflix. So mm-hmm. as a creative out there, create your story, right? And just continuously push it and work hard to get the numbers and you're yeah. gonna make a difference. And you're yes. gonna be happy because I don't know, like you're gonna love what you're doing. So and then we pray that we're there also. To come mm-hmm. and pick you up as an umbrella, that yeah. because our goal is to be the platform that Muslims know that they can come to and don't have to worry about any haram in any film. A peace We're of not mind. interested. Yeah, you got a peace of mind that you can be creative. You're not gonna have to kiss a guy. Sisters are not gonna have to take <laughs> hijab off. If you wear hijab, great. If you don't wear hijab, you know you you, you don't have to like. As si- I, we hired in American Sharia, we hired the sister with niqab because she wore niqab. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like giving everybody an opportunity, and we wouldn't, we didn't have to make her take it all. That would be yeah. for another sister inside of it. But the sister still felt good because she was included. Of course. And so that's our mission for Halaliwood to make sure that we include everyone and keep yes. our films with morals and integrity and, and good character and good manners. But we gotta tell a story. Somebody's gonna be a bad guy, but we don't have to get, we don't have to get unrolled. You know. We don't have to get unrolled, and we don't have to sell. Sex. Absolutely, so absolutely. That's our mission, Alhamdulillah. And uh, I think it's very exciting because there's a whole big market for PG-13 films. Of course. Know? And um, hey, man, I have I have some ideas myself. I have some ideas myself, yes. and I and I would love to share them with you. At another time, inshallah, we can probably maybe I, I, you know expand I, I, it and make it amazing. Yes. Now. Well, bro, this has been amazing, this awesome interview. Thank you so, so much again for, for joining us here on Real Time. We really appreciate it. I know you're super busy, but again, thank you from the top of our heads, as we say in Arabic, <laughs> and from my eyes. Uh, no, man, but, thank you, too, yeah. man. I appreciate you. I love you, Mustafa. I love your family, man. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. And thank you. I, I, I'm supportive. I, I just want to be able to get in a position where it's real support. And not just so you know something long drawn out. But I'm yeah. I'm excited for what Allah is blessing us to be able to do. And so may Allah keep blessing Halaliwood and the Cinema King and all of you fellow Muslim Heavy. writers and creators out there. Like yes, tell everybody one thing too, Mustafa. Follow us yeah. and tell your friends yes. to follow us. Not for the numbers so that we can brag. No. but one the thing support. that happened with me with Netflix was they are concerned what Muslims actually watch American Sharia because of the numbers. That's what Netflix says. Will they watch it? Uh huh. And I was like, yes, but I'm not able to prove it. They're just listening to me that yeah. I want to be able to go with these impressions, with these numbers and say, look what the impressions that I'm having on, yes. her, on my Instagram. Look at these numbers. We got a million followers. Like, look at yeah. it. And so I know Muslims are following so many other people, but we need you guys to give us these numbers and we need you to tell all of your friends because this is part of a bigger plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jazakallah khair, bro. And inshallah, many more awesome projects uh, to come your way. And inshallah, we can work together in the future. Uh, so let me go ahead and end this live stream. Jazakallah khair, and I'll get to you in just a second. All right, y'all. 
I will see y'all in the next one. If y'all if y'all enjoyed this live stream of real time, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit that post notification down below and comment who you would like to have on the show and see if we can make that happen. This is Mustafa Talib with Cinema King Productions and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.